Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I wanted to talk about what I learned from Josh Starmer's interview. So the guy from StatQuest here, if you don't know, he makes some awesome videos on machine learning and some stats topics, uh, but his videos look just like his book. So his book is, you know, the StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning, and you open it up and, you know, it's, it's illustrated. Like it's an illustrated book and it has really cool drawings and topics, and it makes things easy to understand. And his YouTube channel has almost the exact same principle and design, so it's all very simplified, very, I don't know how to explain it, but he's very like fun to and exciting, especially when I talk to him on the, on the interview, which I'll put a link here or at the end of this video if you wanna watch the interview with him and learn a bit more about who he is in his channel. But the one thing that I really liked, the one thing I really learned is that there doesn't need to be, I guess, some like snooty, you know, highfalutin uh, mentality within the stats quant finance realm. And it has kind of a double-edged sword to it. And I think this is why it's kind of hard to swallow, but it's something I would like to work a little bit more towards on my channel because I find often I'm in what I call quant paralysis, where I can't make videos. I can't move, I can't do things because often I have really, really good ideas and I have awesome problems, but it's very, very specific to an exact set of data that I just, I can't use because it's typically at some firm amount and so I can't use that. Um, and so I try to make more general videos, but then I often get to the point of thinking like, this is too simple, this is too dumb. I don't need to make videos around this topic, right? Everybody knows this, that, and the other. And then I work with people in the industry and I find out like, people don't know this. Like, how do you not know this? And I'm like, I just shake my head and I'm like, okay, okay. Like, maybe I'll make a video on this idea or this topic, or maybe I'll do, you know, something. And I get stuck in this, like it has to be rigorous enough. It has to be quanti quantitative enough. It needs to be like super fancy and rigorous. And I think part of this issue and kind of my struggle as well is I misread uh, kind of the averages. So I talk to really smart people a lot of times, subscribers that have great questions. Um, so many of you are the ones that like reach out to me. Those that are like strong subscribers. Uh, often I think you're just brighter than the average person. And so I try to cater to this like little bit of a niche, but then I run into this struggle with, I can't give away trade secrets or like ways that we do things that are very specific to an example and I can't use data. And then I have to like, you know, plot it all out and show you some example with it. It's just really, really challenging here. And so I'll try to make more content around this, but I really liked his stuff, because I remember watching his videos, so Josh Darmer's here at StatQuest, and he does like, he gets to the end of the point, and then he goes, bam. And I remember thinking, this is so dumb. Like, this, this is too simple. This is, you know, it's childish. It's all like in this illustrated version. And then I watch them over and over, and I'm like, but it's so easy to understand. And it makes complete sense. And if I was to train somebody, and make it super easy to understand. I wouldn't have to struggle the way I do struggle with people. And then me like grasping my head in frustration out of like, I don't know how you don't know all these basics. And I think perhaps my channel should focus again on some of these technical things here. And that's where I've been wanting to do a little bit more of, but I've been a little hesitant to do. And I mean, a typical quant textbook here is just to give you kind of an example. I mean, this one's an applied text. It has... Uh, it's done in R. So if you're curious, this is Introduction to Stochastic Processes with R. Uh, again, I've been wanting to do a review on this book, but I don't believe I have because I haven't had a lot of time to really go through the nitty gritties. But if you look at this, and maybe I'll have to post a picture of this book specifically, um, it's just really formulaic. It has all the math equations. It has some drawings. It has some codes, but it's really digging deep deep. And I think that's why I absolutely love reading books like this, uh, really rigorous textbooks. Um, but they take me a lot of time. I have to sit and think and read and write and do problems. And there's no way you can just read a rigorous textbook and get to that. Um, another favorite book of mine that I've been working on, again, I just don't have the time, uh, is The Volatility Smile by Emmanuel Derman here. So I don't have the fancy cover on it, the desk cover, but I do have the card, card back. 
Uh, in his book, again, we can look in here, and there are some equations. There is some complexity behind it. But what he's trying to do is take quant finance from a textbook level and lighten it up into a, you know, not quite as quanty heavy math theory. Like it's more just like the theory and the application. And he's providing some equations and showing some examples so you can get the fundamental ideas. But it's not going to be like one of those crazy textbooks. And this is why this book is like, I've really enjoyed reading it. Like I sit down and I'm just like, you know, just reading through the text and I'm just really enjoying the commentary, uh, the explanations that he has. I think part of this comes from the fact that he's been in quant finance basically since the beginning. So he sees things very clearly. Um, he's struggled with all these ideas as they put things together over time. And again, that goes back to my Josh Starmer thing of like, you know, his book is like <laughs> on the farthest side possible, simple, easy to grasp. And I'm trying to figure out how do I, I'm not going to go down that path of doing illustrations and all that. That's way out of my realm. Um, but how do I make educational videos more succinct, more to the point, more simplistic without worrying about the quantiness? But at the same time, the reason I think quants in general, when we teach and academics, when we teach, we don't want to dumb it down to the point that it's really easy to grasp because then people say, Dimitri, I took one stats class and I took one quant finance class and I am a quant. And it's like, you're looking at them like you just like, you just barely scratched the surface and you need to have those layers and you need to work your way up um, to some crazy math book like this, like these books a little more where you find out the real world is very complex and, um, and while understanding the fundamentals, so I think perhaps me coming back again at a simplistic view, uh, more like StatQuest, where it's more of a fundamentals understanding these things, uh, might need to be more focused on this channel. And then I will try to, you know, shake in a little here and a little there, more interesting topics with a little bit more advanced application of those easy topics here. Um, but even when I've been to grad schools, even when I've been interviewing the things that people are missing, the gaps are for me like shockingly like they should have been some core basic stats 101 class or it should have been a base math class or a like you should have taken economics. I know the quant finance community all cringes and cries about, you know, economics and they don't like it and it's not whatever. It's not fancy and it doesn't have as much formulaic, I don't know, financial snobbery. Uh but I think people need to take more of these sorts of classes to get it down here. So I'm going to try to focus a little bit on here. Um, Josh Starmer has sparked a little bit of an interest in me of maybe seeing how to make these a little more simplistic videos, things that I think are too easy, um, but maybe focusing on just doing it better and making it a little more clear so that we can get kind of a better foundation here. So anyways, I had a blast out interviewing him. Like his personality when he would talk would come out and I could like connect the dots of when he's talking to me and like the way his voice inflections would go, for example, uh, I could like hear him on the video because if you haven't watched his videos, which again, I highly recommend, uh, it's just illustration. Like his face isn't on there. It's not like me where I'm super lazy and I've just got a camera and a, you know, a Rodecaster Pro soundboard set up and I'm just shooting myself talking on a mic. Uh, it's actual like illustrated and everything, but he's the voice behind it. And so doing the interview is really cool uh, to see, you know, and kind of hear him and see how interesting he is as a person, I think, because we don't get to see that as much where my channel is like, I can come on here and rant and rave and talk about random nonsense and people like you guys are watching me. So anyways, so I'm going to try to make a little bit more simple videos. Perhaps we will see, um, but I'm going to try to do something a little bit different here. We'll see how this turns out. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.